Hello, hello. Hi from Pretoria, South Africa. I'm coming to you to talk about what has just happened, what I've just learned about um, Winnie Mandela, who is the ex-wife of Nelson Mandela, the first democratically uh, elected president of South Africa. Um, and she was his right-hand mastermind, um, Winnie Mandela. She's passed away at 81 years old after a lifetime dedicated to freedom and democracy in South Africa. So I am a native born and ancestral South African, um, born in the 1980s and um, raised in South, in South Africa until I was six years old. I live here in Pretoria, so you guys can check out where I am. Look at this gorgeous walking bridge that I'm on. And I'm here to reflect with you on what Winnie Mandela meant to me as a South African, me as a woman, and uh, how she was really the mastermind behind um, democracy as we know it in South Africa and why she was a really dangerous, really powerful woman that um, the powers that be worked to subdue her, to ban her. She was literally banned, which means when you're banned, you're on house arrest, nobody can contact you, you can't contact the outside world. Um, and she was arrested on uh, several occasions and Winnie Mandela is just really amazing. And to me, I don't think that Nelson Mandela would have been who he was without her and wouldn't have had the recognition that he had um, without her. So if you're joining me, it's me, Tepsi, hello. And um, I am a business strategist. I work in um, digital marketing, online entrepreneurship. I also do copywriting and mindset or life coaching. And, um, you know, my home is so important to me. And the reason I'm able to come here and live freely where I live in this gorgeous place is because the people who came before me fought for my freedom, literally died or were injured or suffered in un... Uh, imaginable ways for me to live the life that I live now and um, I think it's really important to remember where you come from if you see me talking a lot about racism and about um, freedom and about um, representation and equality and what those things mean to me it's because I've experienced the direct result of lack of freedom and lack of representation and lack of equality and um, my country is one of those countries that in recent history uh, was responsible for killing and hurting and uh, maiming a lot of people under white majority rule, um, where 80% of the population, the black population, and the Indian people, and anybody that was Asian, anybody with a little color or melanin to them, was um, kind of not allowed to participate freely in society. And we weren't allowed to live where we wanted to live. We had to live in townships, um, and we weren't allowed to move freely. We had to use a pass like a passport to move between cities, to move between provinces. And um, the reason we don't have to do those things anymore and why we got freedom in 1994 was because people like Winnie Mandela fought for our freedom. So a lot of people know about Nelson Mandela. A lot of people credit Nelson Mandela as being the father of this nation and as being the mastermind behind uh, democracy in South Africa and freedom in South Africa. And, um, you know, what we have is relative safety and civility, you know, living here, um, and people credit Nelson Mandela. But I'm really going to argue with a lot of people and tell, talk to you about Winnie Mandela and what she did for this nation. So um, Winnie had a lot of radical ideas about what freedom meant. She had a lot of radical ideas about equality, and for her, equality meant that we would get our land back. It meant that we would get our freedom to move. It meant that we would have economic um, uh, ability to participate in, in this uh, society and she was never gonna stop until we had all of those things and so it sounds very conspiracy theory um, you know for some people but I really believe that the state that um, wanted to negotiate specifically with Nelson Mandela they isolated him from other prisoners they isolated him from his comrades and they got to him and they got him to um, agree to their measures and to their ideas ah! No, it was a bite. He bit me. Sorry, you cannot tell me that it was a scrape if he did not bite you. You would like how can you tell me that I wasn't bitten? It's not funny. How is it how is this funny to you? Have you ever had a no, I would like I would like to know if you've had ever had a stranger's dog bite you and then No, I would like your phone number. I would is this dog have their shots and 
Can I please have your phone number? Um, guys, I'm sorry I have to go. I was just bitten by a random dog, and this lady just walked off laughing at me, and I'm gonna get their phone number. Oh, hi guys. Okay, so, um, I was just bitten by a dog, just standing here, doing my live stream, um, and I don't know, I'm quite in shock, um, because the owner of the dog, <laughs> while I'm doing this live stream, I get bitten, the older owner of the dog says, um, the man says sorry, the female, the, the, his wife, I presume, starts laughing at me and says, uh, it was just a scratch. It's not, there, is there blood? It's, there's no blood. And then she stomps away. She gets very angry. And, um, okay. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just in shock. Just like, what in the world? <laughs> so my live stream went blank for a second while I'm re recollecting myself. And, um, and I was talking about, I was talking about democracy and I was talking about freedom and I was talking about equal rights. And what just happened to me, I bet you any money, if these, these people who are walking by, there are two white, a white couple, if I was a white person, they would have been, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, what, what can we do to, to help you? And instead, what I got was laughed at. Their dog injured me and I was laughed at. And this is the legacy that white people have created in my country. This is the legacy that, Nelson, that Winnie Mandela was fighting against. It was against being treated like this. I'm in a country where sometimes, and in a world, not just in this country, but sometimes my humanity is, is ignored. My humanity is laughed at. My suffering is a joke or imagined. It's not real. Um, and I just, I'm like, literally in shock. I'm standing, I was like standing here shaking, just minding my own business and bitten by a dog. Like, that's one thing, and I could get over that. I was bitten by a dog. You know, you, you live, right? It's the reaction of the person. It's the tone of the person, and it's a person who looks at you and goes like, in their mind, the word for nigger in South Africa is kaffir. Right? So they're in their mind thinking this bloody heifer is, um, who does she think she is to even talk to me? Who does she think she is to even address me? So what if my dog bit her? I would, and I would argue that these are the kind of people who, if they could, would lock me in their garage and let their dog bite me all day long. Oh, okay. Whew. So I was talking to you about <laughs> Winnie Mandela and, and her legacy and, and, um, my, idea is that the revolution is not over and a lot of people will tell you we have democracy we have you know black rule majority rule you know we have a political system that calls for democracy and equality but what we don't always have is the socialization behind that we don't always have people treating each other as human beings we don't always have um, what the law says in actual action so um, you will see still to this day where even in a black majority country uh, a white person will commit a crime and a black person will commit a crime and the white person gets a much lesser consequence or a much lesser sentence for the same exact um, thing that uh, they both committed a crime right um, so Winnie Mandela was the kind of woman who didn't stand for this. She stood up and she spoke out about uh, inequality. She spoke out about wrongdoing. She wasn't willing to compromise on a lot of different things. And for her, compromise um, meant like, yes, we think white people and black people are equal. Yes, we think that um, it's time to change the status quo. Um, but for her, ch changing the status quo meant, meant taking back our land, having economic equality, having economic freedom, and not letting it all stay in the hands of one um, party, right? And so right now in South Africa, we have economic in inequality in that as black people, we only have 6% participation in the GDP, right? So 6% of everything in the economy is owned by black people who are 80% of the population. And if you're colored, then you don't even feature at all. Um, and 
if you're Indian and some other races, you know, it's just really appalling and really sad what we see in this country. And what, when you look around at like this gorgeous wealth that you see all around, and when I talk about wealth, I'm, I mean land, I mean resources, I mean things like that. We don't all take part in that. So um, Winnie Mandela, to her last fighting breath, was working towards making that a reality, making it a reality for all of us to participate equally, and making it a reality for all of us to be respected as human beings, making it a reality for all of us to not have to be subjugated and treated in crazy ways. So if you are just joining me on this live stream, <laughs> you might not have seen, but I was just bitten by a dog while live streaming, okay? Bitten by a dog, and then the owner, acted as if I was crazy and as if nothing had happened and uh, she was like she laughed at me and walked away um, while her husband stayed on but this is sort of the the world that we live in right and so I was in the US last month and for a month and I experienced a lot of crazy racism and a lot of racial aggression I can't even call it microaggression I'll tell you it's aggression and I came home and I was like yes I'm home and what I like about being home is that there's definitely tons of racism here but um, white people don't necessarily usually feel the, the need to talk to me about what they think about me they just keep walking and, and unless we have a reason to interact um, and what I don't like about the US is that I'm on show like if I feel like a show horse or a show dog where um, people imagine that I'm on some kind of like pedestal and they can walk by and comment so my thoughts for this live stream I was all composed I had my ideas I was here to commemorate Winnie Mandela and talk about what freedom and what the struggle was like my thoughts are like psh, all jumbled after being bitten um, and oh, gosh guys I don't know I don't know okay this is a really bad time to tell you <laughs> I was gonna invite you to come and see the land um, come and see this gorgeous place to come and be with me and come and spend time with me and I think um, if what just happened to me deters you you know so be it uh, however on the other hand I think it's actually um, really telling it's really an experience to come to a country and to see what how how delicate uh, post post revolution land looks like and how you can have moments of absolute beauty. If you were with me um, right before I got bitten, we we're standing there, we we're enjoying all this beauty. I was sharing it all with you. I was talking to you about the history of this country. Um, and then the next minute I was bitten by a dog and its white owners had no, one of its white owners had no compassion for me. And you saw the ugliness of humanity in, in one breath, right? Um, and so this country born of both disgusting, despicable, hor horrific, and horrifying um, actions, and also of the most humane, most wonderful. <laughs> he just tried to steal my selfie stick. <laughs> and see, as I talk about humane and wonderful people, um, a guy in a good mood, ready to joke with me, walks by to remind me that that humanity is really beautiful and that there is a lot to live for and that um, I am really blessed. So. So there's that. So hopefully I can come back at another time and talk to you about the legacy of Winnie Mandela. It's all gone from my head right now. <laughs> um, but I am hosting a retreat, you guys. And if you want to come and see South Africa, you want to come and learn about our history, um, you want to come and visit me and hang out um, where I live, then I want you to PM me down below. PM me, private message me, or leave a comment down below. And we can talk about you coming. I have spot five spots. The retreat is in September. We've set the date for September 7th through 21st. I'm sorry, September 7th through 15th. And um, I want to see you here. I want to host you. So thank you <clears throat> for witnessing with me and for me what just happened. And with that, my kids were playing here. Say hi, Funi. This is my oldest, Funi, and my husband, Sean, sitting next to her. And the other ones are somewhere. <laughs> so I'm going to hang out with my family and say goodnight to you guys. Love you. Goodbye.